Mini episode 1653 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to FDH Lounge Mini Episode 1653. This is FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris with our tribute to our greatest guest, Bob Barker. On August 26th, the news unexpectedly hit that Bob had passed away. We knew that due to Bob's incredible generosity in visiting our program seven times, we were obligated to try to speak about him in a way that would do justice to his life, which was truly one of the great American sagas. Thanks to the booking efforts of the FDH New York Bureau and the receptiveness of Bob's legendary publicist, Henry Bollinger, who coincidentally passed away almost five years earlier to the day, Bob joined our program on May 20, 2009 for the first of his seven appearances. He was in the midst of a book tour for his memoirs, Priceless Memories, and our conversation was incredible. It's hard to pin down why Bob, who is admittedly not an online person, kept coming back to our program because it's always hard to enunciate how you can be so fortunate, but he gave a real money quote during his first appearance that we've admittedly beaten into the ground ever since, quote unquote, well, you're a very discerning fellow. That was in response to our observation that he made a conscious decision with his book to take the high road in all recounting of his personal dealings. Now, Bob was visited with some controversies in his life, out of continuing respect for the man, we won't get into them here, but he was proud of his decision not to use his book to settle scores, and he was clearly delighted that we gave him the chance to elaborate on that decision. From there, we invited him back on September 9, 2009, to discuss his great appearance as guest host of Monday Night Raw. When he mentioned encountering Gorgeous George on his way up decades ago, that was the launching pad for subsequent discussions that we would later have about other American legends that he came across when both he and they were still anonymous, Stan Musial and Frank Sinatra. That note encapsulates what we love the most about the discussions with Bob, that everything everyone knew about his fascinating life was just the tip of the iceberg. Bob would appear five more times through January 2017, coming on that time to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the program, and every occasion peeled back new layers of his experiences and perspectives. One of those appearances was very fateful in terms of timing, something that you couldn't make up if you tried, taping within 48 hours of the Zanesville Animal Massacre in 2011. Now, Bob, a lifelong Cardinals fan, was booked initially to discuss their fateful run to the World Series, and the opening part of our conversation was shaped around that. But then the talk took a serious turn, and it became a chance to hear Bob in very raw, passionate terms, speaking about cruelty to animals that private zoo operators and other greedy idiots bring into this world. With Bob's vast education on the subject, He spoke in a very serious manner at length about this important subject. It's an extended look at Bob communicating in a way that few got a chance to hear him. As our great friend, fellow FDH Lounge dignitary and proprietor of the Tomorrow Will Be Televised podcast and column Simon Applebaum has noted, Bob's early career in radio set the tone for his decades of success as a TV game show host first with Truth or Consequences, and then in the defining role of a lifetime on The Price is Right. In radio, Bob developed a conversational style that was ahead of its time, something that would become the default format of online talk shows in the 2000s, which deviated from the traditional question and answer format that shows like ours have always shunned in favor of a two-way discussion. It's very easy to imagine Bob dominating this medium if he was born decades later. On The Price is Right, Bob became one of the most famous figures of the 20th century. 
the one game show host that comes to mind above all others. All but the first nine years of the show were lived in the shadow of the tragic passing of his wife Dorothy at age 57 in 1981. Bob's outlet for his grief was his budding interest in animal rights, which became a defining passion in his life. His plea at the end of every show to have your pets spayed or neutered became the most famous platform for animal rights that has ever existed. Bob's return visits to The Price is Right in his retirement rank as the greatest moments in daytime TV since he left it. Some of the projects that Bob participated in would be defining moments in most other careers, hamming it up with Adam Sandler in those classic scenes in Happy Gilmore, sitting in on Match Game in the 70s for eight years, longtime co-host of the Rose Parade and longtime Miss USA and Miss Universe host. Bob was a 19-time Daytime Emmy winner. But the defining elements of Bob's life were the personal ones that allowed a self-made young man who grew up on an Indian reservation and served in World War II to never forget where he came from. The courtesy, the kindness that shone through in his conversations were reflective of the character of the man who never allowed himself to become a difficult and egotistical man once his fame exploded. In that way, most importantly, he became an example for us all. God bless you, Bob. Thank you for joining us for this very special mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.